time for Cutting Edge Consciousness with Freeman Michaels and Barnett Bain. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And welcome to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here with Barnett Bain. Good, good moment all. Good moment good, all. Good moment to everyone. Um, it's uh, quite a day. Well, we're uh, talking to you in the wake of uh, events that have gone down on the East Coast in Boston. And um, it's, uh, it's confusing, isn't it? I mean, there's... It's supposed to be confusing. It is. Oh, I don't know if it's supposed to be confusing, but well. I'm certainly, I'm certainly uh, confused. Uh, this morning, as I, as I was getting ready to, to leave the house to come to the studio, it occurred to me that I have these conflicting uh, thoughts and feelings. Hmm. Um, a lot of emotion and a lot of sadness and a lot of shock. And at the same time, I am unrelentless, un- unrelentlessly, I guess is the word, uh, optimistic. Hmm. And I wondered, about, uh, I wondered about my capacity to hold those things simultaneously. I looked up um, optimism, and for some reason it threaded back to... Um, I noticed a link that said, is, optim- is, is pessimism a sin? And I went straight oh, to that. Oh, wow. And uh, I reviewed very quickly uh, some of the thoughts and some of the writings of uh, people who posted to that. And there are, there are certain Christian traditions, um, enlightened Christian traditions, that hold that uh, pessimism is um, an attitude that sets the individual up in, in direct opposition to the divine, to all that is. Oh, wow, that's and interesting. And so there's a certain kind of arrogance there. Whatever anybody or any of our listeners take from that, uh, I'll tell you that I was inspired by that, and uh, I felt it was a, a very, um, not so subtle, but very gentle course correction for me. Yeah, is, you just said there's a little arrogance there. Did you mean to say that? <laughs> uh, I meant very specifically that there is arrogance in holding a position of uh, pessimism. Ah. Ah, got it, it. requires okay, yeah, yeah. it requires one to go up against, to go up in opposition to the um, to the fullness of all that is. You mm. have to set yourself apart. Mm. But the conflicted part allows for you know some uh, some part of me mm-hmm. to feel. To, to slip into pessimism. I mean, wh- how do I how do I want to be with the part of me that gets pessimistic? How do I want to be compassionate? Right. Yeah. I suppose in the same way that I want to be uh, about uh, all of those whose lives were um, so horrendously impacted by violence, I want to hold that uh, with love and with care. Uh, I don't have the experience or the capacity to even imagine what that kind of trauma is like. Uh, and yet, I, um, to the extent that I have had trauma in my own life, I have some idea, of, some feeling of uh, what it takes to uh, be with my own discomfort and my own fears and my, uh, the stuff that comes up from me and be large enough to uh, hold that and... Um, and, and and guess only guess what it might be like for others. Right, and to see the collective experience from my own particular personal vantage point, um, we've talked a lot about how we can own things. You know, not over responsible, but an element of being aware of what gets triggered for me mm-hmm. and how I experience. Um, I, I love the idea of conflicted. Am I okay with being conflicted? You know, you said something to me recently in a conversation. You said, well, what if we dropped all the jargon? What if we, because you and I both have language that we've developed over the course of, you know, our entire lives, really. But but language specific to human potential and leadership and all these things that we um, are very tied to. And you said in the conversation, what if we dropped all the, the jargon? What if we just put it down for a minute? And what are we getting? What are, what, are, what are we going after? What are we? What's underneath all of that? Can we um, reorganize uh, our thoughts around something that isn't caught up 
in a um, control. It is an element of control. Mm -hmm. It is an element of control. That isn't caught up in controlling. Well, or defining or any of that, you know, that we're really okay with a certain amount. Because what I was going to get to with this is it brought up confusion. And you were even relaying a conversation you and Sandy had Mm -hmm. where you were uh, saying the same thing. Like, what if we drop the jargon? You know, it's actually, I I love it. I'm excited about it. Like, if I put the jargon down and I really try to connect on a a deeper level like what's going on that I'm trying to that I'm moving towards and the words that came up were things like fulfillment or excellence greatness um, profound deep connected in lieu of the jargon in lieu of of the jargon I think you're right on I think you're right on target for certainly for me uh, that feels that feels um, I can feel the attraction of that I feel the excitement of that I'm no longer interested in human potential. I am interested in human fulfillment. And tracking back to this, uh, this world event, the Boston Marathon event mm-hmm. specifically, but we go back to Newtown, we go back to 9-11, it doesn't make any difference. If we experience it jargon-free, there's an offer there. That's and the a, idea there's a good piece of jargon right there. That I'm conflicted and confused. It should be a no-offer zone. A, a no offer. Oh, the idea of the offer. Yeah, that's another piece of jargon. See, it, you trip on it. What do I do when I peel away this jargon that I've gotten so attached There's to? There's an opportunity to be more real that's and the more issue. in the moment. Yes. And less defaulting back to these um, labels, uh, to these uh, shingles that we hang out that separate us from being in the experience. This language that we use, it becomes brittle. Here's mm. a tree, there's a car. Keeps us from experiencing the treeness. Here's the offer. Keeps us from experiencing uh, intimacy with uh, an opportunity to feel something mm. and to think something. And in between the feeling and the thinking, something reveals itself. And when we can become intimate with what is being revealed, then we access intelligence. But behind the screen of labels um, that become brittle, jargon. We don't have access to that um, vulnerability, and we don't have access to revelation. Yeah, there's nothing new. I want uh, to take this moment to please to have access to uh, something very, very new. Mm. Uh, first uh, time on this show. First time on this show, um, and a relative we've orbited in. We've orbited in the love for quite some time. Uh, spent. Um, a little bit of time together, but I am very, and I'm looking forward to much more time together. And I'm very glad to welcome Joe Vitale uh, with us on on air today. Um, for those of few of you who don't know this name, Joe Vitale is the best-selling author of way too many books. I think he's written like fifty books. I know we don't have the time. We don't, we only get an hour here, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> but <laughs> we could spend the hour just listing the just books. Listing, written. Just listing, just listing them. Uh, he's also uh, recorded a zillion audio programs, fabulous ones. The secret to attracting money. I think I pr- probably need to double down on that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's a uh, founder of Operation Yes, which is a movement um, to uh, reduce uh, homelessness. He's a uh, 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 I made star turns in movies like The Secret, small, oh, yeah. small movie. Yeah, a little movie. The Opus and The Compass and many more. Uh, and um, we are very, very grateful to have him here with us this morning. Welcome, well, Joe. Welcome, Joe. Glad to be here. What an honor. What a treat. I'm so excited. I actually showered and shaved this morning. Nice. Whoa. I got Had we it. known that, we would have we gone on location. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or we might have showered and, and shaved ourselves. Right. Yeah, well, I guess maybe we're not that excited. That's, <laughs> that's a big commitment. <laughs> the truth comes out. I don't know how you guys feel now. So we're looking at world events, and you know, a lot of us um, want to own in some way what it what's showing up for us you know in a way that we feel like we have some sense of power or some way of being with it and what we were sort of talking about joe and and i know you heard it was there's a slippery slope because very quickly in trying to own it and feel empowered we can go into control and and the jargon itself the the language that we've you know that has uplifted us in one moment 
uh, shackles us in the next moment. And, and that's kind of uh, what we're talking about today. And I'm, I'm guessing, as the author of more than 50 books, you've, uh, you've uh, scratched your head about this one a few times. <laughs> Not only scratched my head, but beat my head against the wall. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm just going to cut to the chase. Yes, I was listening and fascinated with your dialogue there. For me, there's a balance, balancing act between complete, complete responsibility for what has taken place every day, not just Boston, but every day, completely responsibility for that, and also the other side of it, having no control at all. Mm. And this is, I, I wrote one book called The Awakening Course, and there's this understanding that we go through these levels of awakening, and the very first one we're born into, for the most part, we're victims. We just feel like we have no control. We don't really get to do anything. We just respond. We don't even respond. We react to everything. The second one is empowerment. And fortunately, movies like The Secret or maybe one of my books wake somebody up to go, oh, I can actually create my own reality. And that's a thrilling stage. The third stage, though, is surrender. Mm. And that's when you come up against something like Boston or you come up with a death in your own family or an illness or something where you go, my God, what, I can't handle this. I can't do this. I don't have complete control over the world. And then there's this fourth stage, which some people call enlightenment, I call awakening, and that's where you realize, yeah, we're responsible. We are in some way reflecting the consciousness of the world and sending out this signal on an esoteric level, if you will, or a psychological level or a quantum level that actually creates these tra tragedies. We are responsible for that, and we have to let go to this higher power, this divinity, because of its own plan. So here we are in this midst of, oh, this hurts, and I'm responsible, and I don't know what to do about it except heal myself. I think the key is the, in, lies in the word responsible. It, that's the huge one. The um, traditional consensus understanding of responsibility has been a loaded one. I remember being a small boy. I remember that um, uh, having to take responsibility usually uh, was part of a conversation that ended up at the back side with the back side of somebody's hand. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh. so there was a uh, there was a guilt by association and anger buried inside of that. Oh. Uh, and as you speak it Joe it it is clear to me and I'm sure to any of our listeners that you are talking about the ability to respond. And so we we create our reality 100% I certainly believe that. No caveats. Well, when you say that, I want to make sure everybody understands, when we say we create our own reality, most people draw this line in the sand and, and mean that they only create their own life experience. We create everything, that but was, we're creating, yeah. most people think they are, they are operating out of their own uh, ego state, their own limited personality state when they say that. Right. And the responsibility component that you referred to, yeah. if I heard you correctly, you were talking about, yes, you, you're creating it by direct cause. I go out and I kick the tires. Yeah. Or by allowing, <coughs> as a function of certain ways that I've been socialized, I allow it. It's consistent with a belief system. And then part of the responsibility is to see, well, where in the, out, um, in the outplay of events like Boston... How is that consistent with what I believe about the world? Yeah, what part of me, what part of the internal me had a hand in making that happen? That's in allowing it. That's completely responsibility there. Yes. And that's when responsibility becomes something people don't want to hear. And mm -hmm. when I say responsibility, I am not talking like your childhood experience, which I've also had. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about guilt. I'm not talking about blame. I'm not talking about punishment. I'm really talking about awareness. Yep. I'm talking about awareness of my own hand, like the whole world is this mirror of my consciousness. And so if I don't like something out there in the mirror, I don't go and fracture the mirror or change the mirror or put makeup on the mirror. I look in me because I'm the projector. Yes. That's and where responsibility comes in, in the way that I refer to I respond to it. I recognize that at the very least... 
I allowed it because it's consistent with uh, my worldview. Uh, I forgive it. I forgive myself. I have compassion for myself and for those that uh, are in the play with me. And uh, I hold those energies and do the best that I can to, uh, to love and to grow. And more and more of the lights go on. I become progressively a more and more empowered co-creator. I'm creating with more aspects of myself as yet un, um, unknown to me. Yeah, and there's more dimension. So this, again, goes back to the word capacity, where there's more dimension to hold the paradox. Mm -hmm. You know, that paradox, Joe, you were talking about, where yeah. on one level, complete responsibility, on the other level, no control, and they both exist simultaneously. Yeah. And that we're okay with that because there's a point in time where we don't have the capacity for that. So we have to crunch everything down to a small story that's digestible and, and relatable. And I can say to people and they can go, yes, 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 yes. And that's the smallness of my world. But again, with consciousness, our world begins to expand and we have mixed feelings and we feel conflicted and things are true and not true simultaneously. And, and, and there's dimension to it where, you know, previously we couldn't handle that. So really, as we talk about this awakening process that you referred to, Joe, it's a kind of opening to uh, more. Mm. Well, from that perspective, and this sounds so rebellious and, and even insane to say. Go, do it. <laughs> wait, wait, I want, wait, you, to, I want pull you to do it. On the... I want you to do it, but I want you to do it after the break. Wait a all second. We're in radio break. here, and yeah, it is yeah. all about, so all you, about you, teasing you, the audience. So Joe has just pulled the pin on the grenade. He's holding it. We <laughs> promise that we will be back before it goes off. <laughs> so stay with us here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness, thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. Thank you for staying with us here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. This is Barnett. I'm here with Freeman and our guest, Joe Vitale. You can hear the tick, tick. <laughs> He's, got the pin out. He's got the pin out. It's between his teeth. Uh, Joe, before it goes off, you'd better share. <laughs> Yeah, that's really kind of rude and cruel. I mean, ah. you left me with a hand grenade. When you pull the pin on that thing, you only have a few seconds, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I've been holding it. Well, you know, it's urgent. That's it's what just... my first wife said. <laughs> <laughs> so, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> She's no longer listening to you, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I heard first wife. So yeah. <laughs> well, listen, from what you guys were just saying in this very stimulating conversation, my hand grenade is the idea that Boston is a gift. Mm. Say that again. Boston is a gift. Mm. Say more. From the perspective of what we were just talking about, and I guess I should yep. <laughs> remind people of it, because if you just tuned in after a break, That's and you right. heard me say Boston is a gift, you're thinking, what? Yeah, you're going to be hell? getting some mail. My, yeah, well, your lines will light up here, and mm -hmm. we'll all get mail. Mm -hmm. But it's from the conversation we were just having that everything in life is an extension of our consciousness. So when I'm exiting my email program, it's the only time I get to see the headlines in the news, because I don't watch the mainstream news. Mm -hmm. And so I see a headline about Boston, and I go, oh, Jesus, what happened? And I click on it, and I get the gist of it. My first response is a very human one yeah. uh, about the, the sorrow, the shock, the sympathy, the what can I do, what does this mean kind of response. Mm -hmm. My second response is more, I don't know if it's a divine response, but it's in the direction of the divine, where I'm asking myself, what in me, what belief system, what mindset, what paradigm, what sort of negativity might be in my consciousness that would contribute to, to something like this actually happening. I'm taking the famous phrase, you create your own reality, and instead of just saying, well, I just create Joe's reality, I'm extending it to say whatever Joe experiences, whether that's on the TV news, that's on the Internet, that's some car accident I saw or I hear about Boston, whatever it is, I created it on some level. That's the level of full responsibility. That's when I get to wrestle with the devil of my mind, to get to this place of understanding, hopefully awakening. And from that perspective, Boston is a gift. Yes, I, I hear you. And I realize 
how uh, confrontive uh, that is and uh, that many will recoil from that. And at the same time, I hear and understand the uh, great truth in it. The delicate balance is for us all to uh, unpack the hit as a yeah. gift. And part of the responsibility is to honor what is um, developmental in us and what, is, uh, what we're experiencing, and to honor our own pain and the pain of others, and at the same time uh, to respond uh, to um, to respond to uh, the uh, to the ownership, as you say, yeah. to uh, to respond to the superseding consciousness of it, and to to uh, recognize it, to see our hand in it, uh, to see uh, the parts of us that are complicit in it or that are uh, active in some way in it, uh, to forgive that, uh, to heal that and to begin to become uh, more effective stewards of what we are thinking and what we are feeling, what we are visioning, what our belief systems are, what our visions are, uh, what our capacity is to give and to receive love and joy in, uh, that in ways that very often contradict how we have conditioned ourselves to respond to life. So this is a very, very big uh, dance that we are doing. And, and I want to say this really simply. I, I remember after 9-11, I remember going out that day um, after seeing the bombings in the morning, uh, someone, I, I think our gardener had come and said, did you hear what happened? And we turned the TV on. It was right before I was about to take Josh, who at the time was about 11 years old, uh, to school. That's my stepson. And I turned it on and I remember watching it. And at first, I didn't know how to feel. And through the day, there were these waves of feeling. I was crying. I was listening to the news. I was interacting with people in a different way. I felt very vulnerable. I felt very present. And so when you say gift, that's what I remember. Mm -hmm. And I have a sense, uh, I had a sense yesterday of feeling. In fact, I had to go on the radio. I had a, another show I do. And I was on trying. And everything I had planned for, everything I had prepped, was gone. I couldn't, it didn't matter. I, I kept kind of trying to track back to it and I kept sort of admitting like, okay, I don't want to talk about that because that doesn't seem to matter in this moment. So again, it's like, it's interesting. I didn't mean to tie these two together, but dropping the jargon is similar in that it forces me to be more real. So it's dropping the, something interrupts the sort of monotony of my daily patterning and I have this opportunity or gift, as you put it, to feel more fully and to be in my experience more. I, I, I love what you just said, but I want to make sure that I add something here, because first, we're not looking at Boston with any sort of coldness here. It's actually mm -hmm. the opposite. We're mm -hmm. looking at it with an open heart. Open heart and love. Yeah. And beyond that, I actually want to heal it. Yes. So I want to quickly say I wrote a book called Zero Limits, which was the true story of this therapist who worked at a mental hospital for the criminally insane, and he helped those people not only get better, but they were healed, they were declared normal, and within four years, all of them were released. And how did he do this? He worked on himself. He That's did it. a healing technique called Ho'oponopono, Hawaiian technique, don't need to remember the name, but it basically had to do with loving yourself, forgiving yourself, and from that, you healed the outer. He would look at the records from these inmates. So these were murderers, these were rapists, they were mentally ill, violent criminals. They were shackled. They were sedated. And he would not work with them directly. He'd look at their records and then go inside himself to heal what he was reacting to. Oh, that's fantastic. And this is what I want to point out, because I don't want to leave people hanging and just say we had a great conversation about Boston and Boston was a gift. It wasn't that stimulating. No, I want to heal it. And yes. that's where coming from I'm responsible is the first level of this. How am I responsible? It's an extension of my consciousness, my beliefs. The Boston experience is in me. It's not in Boston. It's in me. Mm. And then what I have to do is love and forgive myself. From there, I can heal this experience so it doesn't happen again. That's, That's very good. Me. That's very good, no, Joe. That's brilliant. The, the outer world and the inner world are the same place, and yeah. that is a higher understanding That's that right. you are pointing to. 
we uh, discover what matters to us, as what you said, Freeman, what is, real, what is more real. We discover it through great beauty and sometimes through great pain. Yeah. And uh, in moments like this when we experience great pain collectively, hearts open, we are more present with each other, more compassionate with each other. Um, people are capable of great acts of selflessness and courage mm. and generosity. And there is a sorrowful beauty uh, that unfolds that, um, as you were saying, in the wake of 9-11, there was a, uh, an, aching, an aching beauty and a sense of community and connection yeah. that is more real. And these, I think, are indicators of what really does matter. And in times of joy, uh, we tend to forget that. We don't have to, and, and that is what I hear you speaking to, Joe. Um, yes. We heal ourselves sufficiently that we can dial into what is more beautiful and good and true. And we get to wrestle, as Joe was saying. We get to wrestle with this. We get to, it shocks us out of our comfort and complacency. I want to just um, move the conversation a few clicks to the left or to the right. <laughs> um, one of the things that I enjoy about you, Joe, uh, uh, and this, in this community that, um, uh, that, we are, uh, that we share is that uh, you are a teacher, um, and the, the way that you show up as a teacher is um, by sharing your aliveness. That's it. You are one of the more alive uh, guys that I know, <laughs> uh, and you express your aliveness and your passions in the works that you do, and therefore you are, um, uh, you are prodigious in, in your passionate output. And that by itself inspires and uplifts and heals. You know what I love? By I, example. I, I'm going to add something too, Joe. When, in prepping this show, you're a really hard guy to prep because normally people have one thread right. that they follow. <laughs> And you've got so many different, I mean, you've written over 50 books. You're, you're now uh, writing music. And I love that because what I said to Barnett, we met before the show because we do a little prep. And I said, we can talk about anything with this guy. And he said, absolutely. Be, and that's a beautiful thing. So I love that, that again, we're talking about complexity and dimensionality and, and welcoming that. Uh, while it's disorganizing, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Prepping the show with Joe is going to be disorganizing. It's a gift. So what I want to invite you to uh, respond to uh, is this, um, it's not so much a question as a statement. Uh, I believe that people uh, express themselves and, uh, and are um, sharing their consciousness in, uh, through what they say and what they think and uh, what they do. Uh, you are certainly a proponent in a, or an exponent of that. And I want to know, uh, I'm very clear that it's very, very conscious. And I want to know um, how you hold that vis-a-vis -vis your life's work. What it is that you are in this, how you, what you see your life's work to be. Wow, what a great question. And thank you for the nice things you just said about my work and passion and all of that. Thank you very much. Uh, I am here to inspire people to go for and achieve their dreams. And how I inspire them, originally I just thought I'd be an author and I would write a few things that would make a difference. And apparently I did, and that led to me being invited to do things I never expected, like appear in movies. And then that apparently got me invited to be on TV shows like Larry King, which led to more book deals, which led to other things like uh, audio versions of things and a Miracles coaching program and this, that, and the other. And these days, yes, I am a musician my sixth CD is being uh, duplicated today. It'll be out this week. And what does all of this mean? It means Joe's following his passion. Yeah. Whatever I frickin' get excited about, I just drop and go <laughs> for it. Mm -hmm. With the idea, I have one eye, one eye out for this. Does this that I'm doing help inspire people? Because that is the main line, Joe's mission on Earth. Inspire people to go for their dreams, to achieve their dreams. And if I can demonstrate that a man who was homeless, was in poverty, was unknown, who was um, suicidal, melancholy, depressed, all of that, can go from that in the grave kind of a beginning to living the lifestyle of the rich and famous and to be so flattered to be on a show like this, then anybody can achieve anything. Yeah. That's the point. 
And I love, I love how broad the criteria, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a narrow criteria, but it's a broad spectrum of possibility. Yeah. So, I mean, cause you are prolific. I mean, it's un, unbelievable. Just, you know, Google, you know, Joe and, and you remind and, me of like, goes you, know, you know what a wishy is? Huh? I don't know. You don't. A wishy is where I grew up in Northern Quebec. We had these well, that explains everything. <laughs> dandelions, these fabulous dandelions. Oh, when they would yeah, go to yeah. seed, they would turn to like, um, they would turn to like angel hair, and you blew on them. Yeah, and it, they would just fire off. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, th- you know, just fire off three hundred and sixty degrees. They would just fire <laughs> off. And uh, that's <laughs> that's Joe Vitale. He's well, a wishy. I, I want to give a takeaway. So the idea here is to get 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 passionate about something, get inspired about oh, something. That's it. That, that's generous. That that's an offer out in the world. Because again, it's 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 interesting. It's not about you. It's about your offer in the world. Jargon alert. A uh, jargon alert. Jargon alert. I know, but it's I'm I'm going to stick with it for just a moment it's, longer. It's right. your gift. It is. It's it is what you bring. That's it. It is how you matter. Mm-hmm. It's how you relate to people Mm -hmm. it is how you care Mm. it is how you show people what is what 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 is possible for them yeah it is how you by example stretch yeah it is how you go for things that at some point are beyond your grasp and then you clutch them and then you take another step to the next thing what he said yeah (laughs) so i that's what uh turns me on about uh you and uh, I just like that. Uh, yesterday, I would have been fine with offer. No, no, I'm good. I, listen, but I'm, today, I'm, no, I'm I you, want you. to. I want to know what matters to me, especially a day after something like. You can keep like, throwing like this grenade. Boston. You can keep throwing this into the middle of the conversation. I, no, no crazy, uh, d- uh, dark pun intended there. Sorry. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Sorry, that was not uh, intended in that way. Um, but but just the idea of dismantling the way we've held things, the construct, in order to get to something deeper so it's more real. So, uh, look, that was a very real way of saying, here's what I like about this guy, and here's what's exciting about his, his offer. Uh, uh, I did it again. <laughs> Shoot. Plus, right. he's great in a Hawaiian shirt. And he's great in a Hawaiian shirt. And the Hawaiian sings, shirt says, every, plays, says uh, everything. Yeah, he plays a good guitar. So, listen, <laughs> before we let you go, uh, Joe, let's... We're going to talk behind your back in a minute. Yeah, we have a lot <laughs> to say. Um what do we? What do you want to send people to? I mean, I want our audience to have more of an experience of you. I think they, most of our audience is going to know you from the secret and sort of have you in, in one one way. But what are some other things? I mean, I love what you're doing now. So the newest CD is coming out. Where do you want to send folks? Well, I'll tell you what. I have a gift for everybody. I have a brand new ebook. I think it's only a week old. It's called The Miracles Manual, The Secret Coaching Sessions. And The, Miracle Man, the Miracles Manual is, 257 pages of me answering questions from people that are in my Miracles Coaching program. And these are the kind of questions that I think are on everybody's mind, everything from, you know, the, the secret and the law of attraction to how do I bring my spouse back or how do you make sense of a tragedy, the, such as what we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. And if they go to miraclesmanual.com, www.miraclesmanual.com, they can have it free. Just Beautiful. go there, read the thing, and what a gift! Fill out the form and and go enjoy. Yeah, and we will have this up on the Cutting Edge Consciousness website. So, oh, folks, thanks. if you uh, get confused, you can always go to the show with Joe, click on it, and the link will be there for you to. And uh, all the talk behind my back will that be there too? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> that you have to stay tuned. Oh for. yeah, you stay tuned for that, or you can pick it up on the podcast, or we'll even send you the uh, edited copy. That's right. <laughs> I don't know if I want it edited. <laughs> <laughs> and for those you listening stay tuned because we'll be right back after these messages to talk about joe welcome back to cutting edge consciousness thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility and welcome back to cutting edge consciousness freeman michaels here with barnett bain just got done with Joe Vitale. Wow. Well, I so enjoyed that guy. He's awesome. You know? Um, he's inspired. He's, he's inspired, inspired and inspiring. So look, you want, this is the whole premise of what he was saying is that whatever I see, I, I've, I've said before that I'm what's right with the world I see and I'm what's wrong with the world I see. If I, again, this way of owning it. And so if I want ins- more, ins- I, I, the inspiration that I, that, that I attract in and I generate is my gift it's his gift and and he lives it he lives it in such a a, you know wide open way um it's a blessing to everyone who comes in contact with him the 
ownership of the world, the ownership of what is right in myself, and the ownership of um, what I uh, prefer less, what I have difficulty with, what triggers me, what uh, makes me hurt, uh, lonely, angry, what makes me feel helpless, hopeless, uh, misunderstood, uh, what makes me feel uh, anxious, uh, fearful, all of this, this whole infinite menu of constrictive th- of thoughts and feelings, hmm. to own them and to make peace with them and to love them, uh, it, it, in my own life, it, is, it continues to help me function more uh, with more and more compassion. And frankly, it gives me, it has given me more and more freedom. Yeah. Freedom to um, the very least say these kinds of things on a platform like this. Once upon a time, I would never have dreamed of these things, much less dreamed of sharing these things. Right. So the world for me is becoming a safer and safer place. And I know that there may be listeners who think, well, that's an incredible vanity. It's not all about you. Um, it, well, is. It, it is. It is and it isn't. It is. Uh, it, is it is. It isn't a, about me. From an ego, from a small me ego place. Yeah, not and, a narcissistic. And as when Joe is talking about uh, ho'oponopono, I can't even say it. Ho'oponopono, ho'oponopono. Yeah. I just, I love to try to say it, but I can't say <laughs> it. Um, the the linchpin of that process is begin. It begins with the ownership of everything. Yeah. The linchpin is the forgiveness of the self. And the understanding that the self and the whole are connected. I am separate. I am both separate and connected to everything that is. That's a that's a leap. It's a quantum leap in my the way that I relate to uh, everything. But it is a healing leap to yeah. make. And that when I forgive myself from that point of view, it has impact everywhere that yeah. no thought and no feeling every thought and every feeling ripples across eternity no, nothing is isolated so that's about we asked him what his life was about the disc- the ownership of that is what my life is about it is now anyway it may change in a week a month it may be all different <coughs> what i love about the whole ho- ho'oponopono uh process i love that you can say it mm-hmm. say it again ho'oponopono nice is the love it so the response to everything is love it that's the that's the perspective from which that process comes and love can be expressed as compassion and understanding and forgiveness and acceptance and yada 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 but but that just that simplicity of love it you know that love it does not mean for anybody that uh, is questioning this love it does not mean um, I approve of it. It's not a complacency. It's a very active interrelationship with it. It is, again, a level of ownership. To love it is to, is to kind of take it on. It's to, to have an active caring yeah. about it from a place that is born out of the experience of sorrow. Yeah. I can relate to my own places of sorrow of um, of anger, of violence, from having been there, I can relate to that part of me, and I can I love it. it. Again, it doesn't mean that I am giving it a license to express, and it doesn't mean that I am approving of it. But I I am loving it. I understand yeah, well you're, it. You're, so your ability to make choices inside the loving of it is greater. Uh, we're, we're, you know, so again, we just go back to the simple story of myself after 9-11 or even during the uh, right after the Boston uh, uh, um, shootings, or not shootings, the bombings, forgive me, or, or after the shootings in Newtown. All of those is how do I how do I be with this? You know, the confusion of it, the hurt of it, the sadness, the anger, the frustration, you know, whatever in a constructive way. Love it, not love the event, but love the love. How, much, how can I get underneath it? And what it, what it evoked in me is a kind of vulnerability that creates a quality of experience in my life. I'm more alive. The opposite of the vulnerability for me is a kind of shut down. It's going back to the constrictive. It's, Deny it, control it. it, it yeah. It's, it's push a, it down. What we push down. Disconnecting. 
you know, what we push down comes at us. It, what we push down in our psyches comes out, at, uh, comes back at us on the screen of the world. That's it. I, I'm reminded of um, dri- years ago. I'm driving in the car and. Um, somebody comes by me and is leaning on the horn and is screaming and yelling at me and shaking fists and and uh, I uh, say to Sandy with uh, real hostility and rage what the is that guy all about and she says well you know, he thinks you cut him off he's responding in exactly the way you're responding so all of this hostility that mm. you are looking at at the world maybe maybe uh, it's yours you know yeah. maybe it's it's matching you now, not to equate that with events that happen other places or in Boston or other places, but um, well, you but can you can in some way. I mean, I'm I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off a little mm-hmm. bit, but you can. Again, it's a level of ownership. If as long as it's out there, as long as I can just project it out and point my finger and call it something out, you know, outside of me, and not take responsibility for it, then. You know, then there's no power in that. Then I'm a victim of what's there, happening. Well, there are, I, I know folks who say, oh, I have no anger. I'm not angry, Especially, particularly people who pursue the kinds of interests that, uh, that we are focused on on this show. Yeah. Consciousness, growth, spirituality. There are some who say, well, I don't have any angry feelings. You, you don't cut off this, a, a part of your humanness. The emotion of anger is a human emotion. You're all of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, You're I'm all of it. And it doesn't mean that it expresses all of the time. But um, we had, before she passed away, uh, we had Debbie Ford with us yes. on this show. And she um, Beautiful conversation. spoke very be- eloquently about our relationship to our shadow. Um, and people would prefer to focus often prefer to focus on their light shadow, not so much on the ownership of the more constrictive uh, things that they either deny outright or we push down or it's uncomfortable. to. Th- I would hate to think that I um, have meanness or I would hate to think that I am capable of violence. And um, there's precious little that at this point that I think I am incapable of given the right uh, set of circumstances. Yeah, and that absolutely. is, uh, that thought um, brings a lot of humility uh, to me. It's, it's, uh, it, it's a shocker. Yeah, I have a, like a, 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 a big banner right now that I want to say, life is uncomfortable and that's not a bad thing. This whole wanting to be comfortable and again, it, it, it generates a kind of complacency and a kind of disconnection. Again, the events such as the, the bombing in Boston, they draw, they, 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 it, it, they fire off within me all this feeling. At the end of the day, what happens is I feel more connected. Yes, I feel vulnerable. But I also, what I was expressing about after 9-11, going out that day, I felt really connected to people. I felt really alive in my experience. So... Again, you know, this whole uh, distraction pattern of wanting to be comfortable. Life isn't comfortable. We're not here to be comfortable. We're here to be inspired. We're wanting here to, be comfortable. to doing amazing things. And we're here to feel fully all of the hurts and the sadness and the anger and the frustration, and the disappointment. You know, feel it. Be alive in it. And then we're responding in a much more helpful uh, way in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then we can actually be the source of something amazing and excellent and great. Otherwise, it's mediocre because we're playing it safe and we don't want to feel too much and we're seeking comfort and and life isn't about being comfortable. That's the headline. It isn't. It's about being alive. It's about being fully engaged. It's about being connected. I don't know what it's about. Um, I have a sense of what mine is about. Right. Uh, And I absolutely agree with you that when I am looking for comfort and there is always a part of me that is looking for comfort and resisting change. Right. When I am looking for comfort, I am, uh, I'm committed to absolutes and guarantees and certainties Yep. as though I can control a dream. Yep. We're back to control again. So it is a control issue. Fix, solve, control. That threads back to what we began the show with um, around um, those that hold pessimism as a sin. And I understand mm. that control is perhaps a greater sin. 
Mm. For the same reason, it is an attempt for very understandable. I can have compassion for the part of me that does that and others. It is very understandable to want to have guarantees and safety by acts and doings, uh, things that we can do in the world, insurances that we take out that uh, mitigate against change. However, if you hold, as we do on this show, that we are consciously, we can become not just lucid dreamers, but uh, lucid livers. Mm. We can become uh, awake and aware that this is a dream and that we can begin to um, co-create with it to the degree we become closer and intimate with what we're thinking and feeling, but that requires feeling, Mm. uh, and choosing and deciding that those energies allow us to become uh, lucid livers. Yeah, I love that, lucid livers. And allow us, that. then we can drop free of the need to control and to have guarantees and to have absolutes and know that we have the capacities and the gifts and the talents and the resources to respond to the challenges of life. Things may take us by surprise, but we have the resources to respond and to grow. And, and I'm going to track back to the jargon conversation where mm-hmm. the jargon um, makes it less real, makes what we're trying to express less, less real. It makes it easy because we can track back to our jargon mm-hmm. and our, our, our already written yesterday's language because we can just repeat it again and again and again and, and think that in some way we're engaged in our lives. But the truth is the jargon, if, if we're not careful, uh, can become another distraction pattern, another way of tracking back to comfort and complacency and disconnection versus can I put my jargon down and wander in a little bit and try to figure out mm-hmm. what I can uh, you know, extrapolate and understand and, and so forth from a, a, a set of circumstances? It keeps us innocent. Yes. It keeps us in the garden. It letting go of the us, jargon keeps us Letting go us in the jargon, go in the, of yes. the jargon requires us to be sufficiently present that we don't yeah. look like it's all tucked in, and that's more real. It's more real. It's a little uncomfortable. It's un- well, the vanities come up and say, well, I don't look good. I'm, you know, I'm on YouTube here. I'm, right. <laughs> but, I'm on radio. Um, the vanities come up. Yeah. The flip side of it is that there's more aliveness and there's more there's more it's more real yeah this is again the layers with our commitment to the edge of possibility is so powerful because as we've said before we'll throw a, a monkey wrench into the works. And then we had we bring a, a guy like Joe on who throws in like two, three grenades. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there's suddenly uh, the whole reservation is blown and we're threading completely new ground. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, uh, I'm sure right now he's off writing a new book or a new song. A he's new, finished three since we got off the air with him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because that's the nature of how that guy puts it out in the world. And we're grateful to each week be able to put this out in the world. And we're grateful that you're listening and watching or having However, you are uh, getting participating this material. with us. We invite you to uh, continue to participate, to tell your friends, and to and to um, feedback to us and correspond with us, uh, whether it's on our Facebook page or uh, on our website or on the on YouTube, YouTube channel, or however or it is we enjoy hearing from you. Yeah. So keep coming back to Cutting Edge Consciousness. <laughs>